Deep diving into Formula One has been one of the funnest things I've ever done in my life. No kidding. Like this whole summer, I've been really diving into Formula One. It's been awesome. We're looking at 10 minutes of F1 facts. Now, that's something I've never really done. So why not, right? This is long overdue. Figured this would be a fun video. That's Here's some facts. I love facts. And uh, what better way to learn some interesting things about F1 all in one video? This is from a channel called Perspective. This will be linked in the description down below so you can watch the whole thing uninterrupted. Let's get it st straight into this. The first fact I know is that the, for five weeks, not five weeks, not weeks, literally, for five races in a row, Max Verstappen has just dominated five wins in a row in a group of the most elite drivers. That's freaking crazy. That's one fact I can contribute. So here we go. Whether you've been watching Formula One for 20 years or 20 minutes, you're going to learn something in this video. Perfect. Here are a bunch of random facts about the pinnacle of motorsports. Feel free to add your own in the comments section below. Over yes, the course please of the do. sports history, Formula One has seen four different logos, wow. with the most recent being revealed at the end of the 2017 season. Okay, so the one they use now is very new. That's what I thought because uh, I've never been an avid watcher of F1 at all. Like I've just only seen highlights here and there throughout the years growing up. I never knew about it, the rules, the teams, none of that stuff. Uh, but of course, because it's so famous, I have seen this logo right here, the black and uh, red one kind of right behind me here. That one I've definitely seen even like recently, probably on like older videos or just older memorabilia or whatever. These two I've never seen. So that's really cool to see. I like how the car is in the FIA there. Really neat. Uh, and then, but yeah, F1, very simplistic, but I like how it kind of looks like a track. So yeah, which one do you like the best? <laughs> Sebastian Vettel holds the record for the most consecutive wins with nine. He did this wow. during his dominant 2013 season. That's insane. Just insane. One Manuel Fangio holds the highest winning percentage at 46.15%. The longest F1 race in history wow. was the 2011 Canadian Grand Prix, which went for four hours and four minutes. What? The race was stopped How? for two hours due to hectic rain, and the rules have been changed since so that it can't happen again. Michael oh, Schumacher wow. and Lewis okay. Hamilton hold the joint record for the most drivers' championships with seven each. Will Jeez. someone break that record one day? Maybe Max Verstappen? Or will Lewis secure championship number eight? Spa Francochamps is currently the now. Longest let's pause it. That's a good point because Lewis, you got to admit, from what I've gathered in my very short dive into Formula One, is that he's very famous for a reason, right? He's one of the best seven all-time championships. He's tied for number one. Obviously, when I've started watching the last few weeks, um, he has had a lot of trouble. Now, all that might not be totally his fault. You know, maybe it is. I'm sure you guys could argue that. But I still think he probably is a good driver. I mean, that, that'd be naive to think he's not. But winning a whole nother championship is tough, especially, you know, with so many awesome talent uh, surrounding him. And, of course, you know, you have, like, young guns like uh, Verstappen, right? On the flip side, Max is super young and already just unbelievably good. So uh, he's got a lot ahead of him. Maybe he will be in the running for that. Lewis Secure Championship number eight. Spa Francochamps is currently the longest racetrack on the calendar at a whopping wow. 7.004 kilometers long. I love Max that Verstappen track, is the youngest race winner in history. He achieved this at the 2016 Spanish Grand Prix at just 18 years and 288 days old. Wow. Max replaced Danny Kvyat, who returned to Toro Rosso after a few questionable incidents, but it's safe to say Red Bull were pretty keen to promote Max. Luigi Jeez. Fagioli is the oldest race winner in history at 53 years years and 22 days old. He wow. set this record at the 1951 French Grand Prix. Now that's Ferrari crazy. are the only team to have competed in every single season in Formula One. Enzo Ferrari Dang. would very rarely attend Grand Prix outside of Italy. In 2002, Michael Schumacher finished on the podium in every single race he entered. Absolutely Jeez. insane stat. Max Verstappen's is full name is Max Emilian Verstappen. Every driver to compete <laughs> with the last name Hill has won a Formula One championship. Wow. Graham Hill, Phil Hill, and Damon Hill. Layla Lam there you go. Anyone out there, your last name Hill? You need to get on the horn with uh, someone from F1 and get yourself into a car. You're getting a championship. <laughs> it's interesting, Lombardi right? Lombardi is the only woman in history to score a point and in Formula apologize. One. Apologize. Let me uh, not interrupt Lombardi that one. Lombardi is the only 
Phil Hill and Damon Hill. Leila Lombardi is the only woman in history to score a point in Formula One. She really? did this at the 1975 Spanish Grand Prix. Wow. Rubens, Bar Rubens Barrichello holds the record for the most consecutive race entries at 326, spanning from the 1993 South African Jeez. Grand Prix to the 2011 Brazilian Grand Prix. Formula wow, One has amazing. recently gone big in the USA, and as of 2023, there yeah. will be three races happening in the country, yes. Miami, Austin, Texas, and Las Vegas. But the this has been a topic of debate recently, and the conversation about how many Formula One races one country should have has never been more relevant. What do you think? When Sergio Perez yeah, so that's a really good point. Um, I think it, it, two angles of this. One, in the, like I said, in the passing by news or highlights or whatever, seeing just generic sports highlights and, uh, of course, seeing Formula One stuff, not knowing really anything about it, uh, I did know as much as that it really wasn't big in at least, you know, my circles here in the USA because... Uh, they did not race here in, in certain years. Now, I'm aware that they did race in the U.S. decades ago, but it, at least in the last 10 or 12 years-ish is what I'm talking about. I know they didn't up until a few years ago when they started, I believe, at Texas, right, at Circuit of the Americas. I do think it's cool as an American, clearly. Like, I, of course, I think it's cool that they broke back in to America and race here. And then, of course, they added Miami this year. So now they race at Texas and Miami, Florida. And then, of course, next year they're going to be adding Las Vegas, Nevada. And I think that's really cool as well. But then begs a question, even as an American who should be thrilled about that, which I am, um, I don't know if it's right uh, to go straight from, hey, we have a pretty established season and schedule. And, oh, we're going to add another country. We'll add the U.S., but then go straight to like the U.S. is kind of the new territory in the schedule and then go kind of within a few years, go straight to like three races in the U.S. Uh, when you're only dealing with a limited number of races per season, that's kind of alarming, right? I think it might be a little much. And trust me, I'm a proud American. I'm glad that we have it here. But I do think it's a little bizarre. I do think it's a little bizarre. I don't even know how we pulled that off, to be honest. Uh, just because there's so many amazing countries involved and there's so many amazing tracks worldwide. Uh, I wouldn't ever want this to become oversaturated in the U.S. I say that even as an American. I appreciate that Formula One is a world sport. I really believe that. And they do race around the whole world. And I think that's awesome. I think that's part of the appeal. You know, NASCAR, for example, I'm a big fan of, but it's only in America, right? It's not a world sport. So it's refreshing to see something that's so fun, so amazing, so competitive, and it's got the whole world aspect. That might be a little much. So as cool as I think it is, and as much as I want to go to one of these, because they'll be somewhat close to me in the U.S., I don't have to go across the world, um, I do think it's a little much. But tell me your opinions on that down below. Perez won the 2020 Sakia Grand Prix, it was his 190th race start. Not only that, but Perez was in last place after an incident on lap 1 forced him to pit. pit. When Nico Rosberg joined Williams, he achieved the highest score ever on the team's engineering aptitude test. Smart Carlos dude. Sainz supports Real Madrid. You can see how loyal he is to Madrid, because in this video, he refused to sign a Barcelona kit. The wow. word formula means the set of rules <laughs> the team agree to, and the one refers to the top tier. The teams literally follow a formula. The Ferrari F2004 was cool. so good during testing that Ferrari were convinced something was wrong. The team launched a full investigation, thinking the car was underweight or that there was a problem with the timing equipment but no the car was just that good if you go to my Park, goodness just by that's the amazing exit, you'll see two statues one of jack brabham and another of alan jones could we see statues of mark weber and daniel ricardo in the future daniel ricardo's middle name is joseph lewis hamilton is an arsenal fan f1 drivers are <laughs> athletes they put their body to the they test are and undertake high levels of training and endurance yes it's possible for them to lose anywhere from two to four kilograms during a race the average that's cost insane. of front wing is $150,000. That's about the same price as a brand new 300 series GR Land Cruiser. My God. Dream car. Fernando Alonso has a 
samurai tattoo on his back. Nicky Lauda was born into a wealthy family, but they were not supportive of his racing ambitions. He took it upon himself to take out a loan and bought his way into Formula 2. The rest is history. It might be wow. risky getting a loan, but not for Nicky Lauda. When Sebastian That's Vettel insane. won the 2008 Italian Grand Prix, it meant that Toro Rosso won a race before Red Bull themselves. When Mark Webber was in wow. his early teens, he was a okay. ball boy for the Canberra Raiders NRL team. He was also encouraged by his what? mum to get involved in as many sports as possible. Got some Australian factoids here. I did not expect that. Hold on, let's go back again. Ball boy for the Canberra Raiders NRL wow. team. He was also encouraged by his mum to get involved in as many sports as possible. Daniel Ricciardo was <laughs> once the number one ticket holder of his beloved West Coast Eagles AFL club in Perth. Being the number one ticket holder is given to someone with celebrity-like status or someone that is well known to be sort of an ambassador for the football club. Wow. The Australian Grand Prix was once held in the city of Adelaide in South Australia. From 1985 to 1995, Formula One took to the streets of Adelaide for what was usually the last race of the season. That Adelaide cool. was a popular race among drivers and fans, often referred to as the Party Grand Prix thanks to the fun and vibrant atmosphere at the track that and awesome. in the general city of Adelaide. Interlock. I got to look for highlights of that. Any suggestions? Drop some video links down below for some Adelaide Grand Prix action, some Formula One, 80s and 90s. That sounds awesome. That just looks like a fun time. Argos translates to between the lakes. The circuit is 4.309 kilometers long. Argos translates to between the lakes. The circuit is 4.309 kilometers long, and Valtteri Bottas holds the race lap record with a 1 minute 10.540. Ross Braun paid just one pound for Honda before rebranding to Braun GP before their unbelievable championship triumph in 2009. Due to the global financial wow. crisis, Honda decided to pull out of Formula One and a management buyout led by Ross Braun, saved the day for the team's drivers and employees. Mercedes were chosen That's to crazy. power the cars as they were deemed the best fit and, on their debut in Melbourne, scored pole position and a P2. Braun would win the championship in 2009 and one of the main key factors was the development of the double diffuser. A team on its knees turned into a fairy tale story thanks to some regulation loopholes. That's kind of crazy, right? I wasn't aware of that story. Like, I know it's a short, concise version, but uh, wow. Team was about to be just defunct, and then, hey, we're on top. <laughs> Gunnar was actually born in Italy and holds a dual Italian and American citizenship. Gunter's wow. first job in Formula One was at Jaguar in the early 2000s before moving over to Red Bull and then eventually landing the Haas job. The US F1 team was granted entry into F1 for the 2010 season but never entered a race. The team was set wow. to have a main base in Charlotte, North Carolina and a secondary right European NASCAR. base in Spain. Financial issues plagued the project and US F1 was never fully off the ground. The team bought two trailers of Braun hmm. GP and these were seized by the UK High Court and sold on eBay. US uh, F1 were fined £309,000 and was banned from competing in any FIA sanctioned event. Dang. If you watch Lewis That's Hamilton's weird. race start, you'll notice that he places his left hand on top of his steering wheel. Many pundits and drivers yeah. believe that he does this for better clutch control in order to get the best launch possible. Plenty of drivers have their own unique ways of doing things, such as Fernando Alonso's aggressive steering technique during the 2005 and 2006 season where he won both championships, and Jean Alesi's hand positioning on the steering wheel during his career. Ferrari has that- See, stuff like that I love. It's super interesting, right? When you have like different weird uh, techniques or, or just weird uh, approaches athletes take to their sport or actors in a movie or whatever, right? whether it's like superstitious things or just like they said kind of oddball techniques that are against the norm i think that's very cool very interesting to learn about uh as someone who also is not only a nascar fan but uh, my favorite sport of all time is probably more baseball that's like my thing a big baseball fan and baseball is kind of famous for that there's a lot of athletes that might be really good uh, but have a weird, you know, batting stance or a weird technique in between pitches or whatever. Uh, but it, hey, it must work because they're really good, right? Ferrari has their own grade one test track, Fiorano. Enzo had it built to replace the outdated Modena Autodrome and for some personal enjoyment. The track has a full telemetry system, a skid pad, and a sprinkler system to simulate wet racing. That's Though, really cool. Though one area of the track was changed after Michael Schumacher provided some feedback. Mattia Binotto revealed that after 
Michael's first test at Fiorano, he approached Jean Todd and expressed his dissatisfaction with Turn 1. Ferrari understood that Turn 1 wasn't exactly like anything on the calendar at the time, and so it was changed. Wow. Lewis Hamilton wore a Michael Jackson-inspired helmet for the United States Grand Prix back in 2013. The helmet definitely stands out with some red, black, and white highlights. There's a picture That's of amazing. Michael on the top of the helmet and a leaning MJ on the side from the legendary Smooth Criminal music video. It's not also, to correct myself, uh, I guess they've been racing at Texas longer than I thought. I thought it was like the last five years, but no, it's back to 2013. That's almost like nine years ago. To me, in my head, it wasn't relevant here, right? Like I, I didn't think they raced here, and uh, I just I never caught on. MJ on the side from the legendary Smooth Criminal music video. It's not the first time Michael Jackson was linked to F1. He has attended the Bahrain Grand Prix, a country where he lived, and here he is with Michael Schumacher. Be wow. honest, did you expect to see a Michael Jackson paddock pass and a picture of him with Schumacher? Valentino I did Rossi not. <laughs> probably could have been an F1 driver. Rossi switching to F1 would have been a huge deal, and it was definitely possible considering he lapped just 0.7 seconds behind Michael Schumacher during a test. Rossi wow. tested for Ferrari multiple times, and he looked right at home in a Formula 1 car. Ferrari themselves believed in his potential, and a switch so from MotoGP happened? to Formula 1 could have happened back in 2007. The 2022 That's Australian really weird. Grand Prix had... Okay, so he's from MotoGP then. That is that is different. I mean, it's essentially the Formula 1 of bikes, right? I mean, is that too out there to say? I don't think so. I mean, that is like the top tier motorcycle race you could ever be in. Uh, that would have been an interesting transition. It sounded like a natural though. The 2022 Australian Grand Prix had record attendance numbers. An estimated 419,144 people Jeez. attended the event over four days, which broke the previous record of 401,000 back in 1996 at the inaugural event. Wow. Tickets were selling like crazy, and the event organizers set up extra grandstands to cater for the enormous demand. Jeez. It was the perfect way to welcome F1 back to Australia, and since then, F1 has committed to Australia until 2035. I'm wow. happy. Ferrari That's amazing. sent Kimi Raikkonen his United States Grand Prix winning SF-71H. It was Kimi's first win since the 2013 Australian Grand Prix, and he shared the moment on Instagram. It was a pretty iconic win for Kimi. Not only was That's it cool. his last, but his only win at Ferrari during his 2014 to 2018 stint before being replaced by Charles Leclerc and moving to Alfa Romeo. And the Valencia street circuit currently sits abandoned. F1 raced in Valencia wow. from 2008 to 2013 and was quite the venue. A very flat circuit with plenty of unorthodox sections the track was set to alternate with Catalonia to host the Spanish Grand Prix, but the deal fell through. The track didn't offer many overtaking opportunities, but 2012 was one of the best races of the season, won by Fernando Alonso. The track currently sits abandoned and in a wasteland-like state, and you should definitely check out this video wow. where Tomo, Eldas, and Hayden went exploring at the circuit. That would be fun to check out. I will make sure and check that out. It is so weird to see. That's something I'm actually into. Uh, when you see places that were popular or held big events and you picture thousands and thousands of people there. In this case, you picture Formula One cars buzzing through this track. Uh, big energy, people all around, TV cameras, everything. And uh, now look at it. And this was not long ago. We're talking 10 years ago, if that. Look at that. Totally abandoned. Weeds growing everywhere. Just has a just dark look. It's so weird. It's so weird, isn't it? Track currently sits abandoned and in a check out this video where Tomo, Eldas, and Hayden went exploring at the circuit. So there were some random facts. That was actually really, really cool. I really encourage you to use that link in the description down below. Check out this whole video and check their channel out. Really cool facts in there. Didn't expect, like he said, to see Michael Jackson in an F1 video. And a lot of these were really, really neat. Facts kind of of all different sorts. Uh, really detailed facts or really quick ones. I kind of liked the variety. It was really, really good. And you know what? Like always, every step I take towards learning more and more about Formula One, I really do enjoy. It is just absolutely fascinating. And uh, more stuff like this because this was really, really great. Cannot wait to hear your thoughts below. Please tell me your facts, whether they're short or long, whatever. Let's hear about them and your predictions for the questions we had 
post in this video. And of course, uh, if you want to talk about this season predictions for uh, the rest of the season or you want to talk about the last uh, few races, uh, you can do so as well. Other than that, guys, make sure to throw a like, a thumbs up on this video because uh, this was really, really fun. It will help it out. And of course, you can subscribe to this amazing community we have on this channel. Uh, we're on our way to 100K. I could use your help. I do appreciate it. That being said, guys, my name is Ian. You're watching IW Rocker. And until next time, I'll catch you later.